I'm super excited to be here. Okay, this is the equivalent if like the Star Wars like theme park came to Saskatoon for a weekend. This is Maker Fair. It's the first one ever and this is so my jam. I drag these guys along, but I really think I'm gonna convert them into makers by the end of this episode because it is awesome. So for those of you who don't know what the heck this is, um, Maker Fair came out of a magazine website that was really big in the 90s called Make, and basically it's the world's largest show and tell. So if you're into pottery or robotics or 3D printing or crocheting or whatever, if you like to make stuff, this is your scene. And so we are here today and we are gonna show you the best of what folks in Saskatoon are making. Okay, super excited. <laughs> Another thing that's totally my jam. I'm here with Stephanie and we are both into pyrography. So what is pyrography? Um, it's essentially burning designs onto wood using electricity to heat a pen tip or anything you can think of. And yeah, it, it makes this kind of stuff. <laughs> um, I'm just like starting to get back into it. And it's awesome because you can do like really nice shading just by like burning more, yeah. bringing up the heat or whatever. So how did you get into this? I started about 13 years ago. My school actually had an art class and we got to learn it in grade eight and nine. And I've been doing it ever since. It's really addicting. Oh yes, this is my main stress, de-stressing like point. I do it every night basically at home. And then obviously, I don't know what to do with all this stuff, so people buy it. <laughs> We're here at the Mini Maker Fair. I'm here with Mike. Uh, Mike is, uh, um, builds models, and uh, he seems to uh, uh, really get a lot of detail on your models. Yeah, each of these is based on an actual aircraft at a particular time, with one or two exceptions. That was a project the Japanese had on the go right at the end of the war, and this one here, that was under construction by the Germans, so you see it's under construction by me as well. So all the, all the models you have here, we were talking earlier about how the, a lot of airbrushing and brush techniques, and uh, are you, are, do most of the models come with their own decals, or are you making decals as well? Do both. Uh, every kit normally comes with decals, but it's not always the markings that you want to use. There's a lot of sources of aftermarket decals, and I've started printing my own now for things that I can't get commercially. Oh hey, I am here with Chris and Mike from Saskatchewan Entertainment Expo and the last time that you saw them we were at Free Comic Book Day talking about Lando but since then and now at time of filming they have announced that Dr. Beverly Crusher is coming to Saskatoon as well so the question I have is Star Wars or Star Trek? I, I can't choose. They're just very different things. I know they're both in space, there's, both, there's, there's spaceships and all kinds of stuff, but to me, Trek is philosophical and a bit deeper and more like, um, you know, it delves into bigger issues in terms of like societal stuff. And then Star Wars is like a, a, a Western in space, which I like in a different way. I like them both equally in different ways. Does that make sense? It's like your kids. I don't have kids, so Star Wars, basically what I'm saying is Star Wars and Star Trek are my children. That's healthy and normal, right? Very. <laughs> so for the real answer, we're gonna ask Chris, Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, for me, it's Star Wars, 100%. Um, I appreciate Star Trek, I appreciate the philosophy, but when it comes right down to it, um, I'm a space cowboy, let's, let's be real. So what I just heard is everybody loves Star Trek as much as me. So make sure to check out Dr. Beverly Crusher at the Saskatchewan Entertainment Expo. See 
this September. All right. So I am here with Curtis, and as you can see, he is wandering around doing probably the most dangerous thing here today is getting people to high five him. He says he's got a lot of Purell. It's still kind of freaking me out a bit, but Curtis, tell us, tell us what this is all about. Uh, this is just a walk-in display. It's interactive, it's LEDs, it's fun. Uh, what it's doing is counting all the high fives. I've got a little Arduino uh, watching some sensors in each glove to, you know, they check for the, the right amount of G-force. Uh, when that triggers, it increments the high five and does a little light show for people as well. That's about it, the rest is just fun for people. So what uh, is your goal today? How many high fives do you think that you're going to get? I, I don't really have a goal. We just want to see, you know, we want to get people out and, and make sure they're very interactive here. They know what's going on. Like, you can, you can interact with every display here. Uh, and so I'm a walking display. I'm here with Randy from Create 3D Printing. And last year on our Nerd Crawl, we visited you guys and you were just in the process of setting up the back room and getting everything in place to do this. And now, voila, one year later, a beautiful thing. Tell us a little bit about the 3D printed trailer. Uh, well, I'm, uh, like you said, with Create Cafe and Wave of the Future 3D. Uh, we, uh, I had a mission to 3D print the world's first travel trailer and I printed a small one and uh, I have North America's biggest machine. It's 28 feet long, 8 feet wide and 7 feet tall. And we printed the world's first trailer in nine and a half days and we beat the world record by six times. Woo! Um, can we take a tour? Can we go inside? All right, let's go inside. I feel like I am in the cavern lounge. It's amazing. So the the texturizing of the wall, is that something that all of the trailers are having or is that more of an artistic choice on this particular model? Uh, that's pretty much on this particular model because this is an ice fishing model that's good to minus 30 with running water. So this is added insulation inside of it and outside the trailer and also it has an extra shock barrier on the outside which means that it's pretty much the only trailer in the world that you could take a 2x4 and smack it over the roof and break the 2x4 and not hurt the trailer. This is really swanky for just going ice fishing. Like, I'm, I'm thinking more glam level, because this is a really beautiful trailer. You've got sink, you've got stove, you've got fridge. Uh, I'm assuming this converts maybe to bed? It's a double bed, and then the front is a single bed. So like a family could be pretty comfortable in here. Exactly, and then you also got an option that the front can be a sofa that converts into a bunk bed. So many options. Okay, um, we need to get one of these for the punch crew so that we can travel around to all the comic Con. So uh, Dean, get on that, okay? Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. I'm Barry from the Western Canadian Robotics Society out of Calgary. And uh, obviously we have a club in Saskatoon yeah. devoted yeah. to this as well? Yeah. Okay, what, what's going on here? Well, that's our automatic drummer. See, you can pre press the black button, play for 10 seconds, and then when the red light comes on, you stop. Well, see, he's doing it now. And when the red light comes on, he has to stop. And then the drum will, whoa, play it back, see? As he said, Bono, well, watch out here, new drummer's coming up. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. So uh, the Poppin' Crackers will have a new drummer, maybe for our holiday special this year. That's pretty great. I'm not 100% sure who I'm here with because I can't read the symbols on the front of the table, but uh, why don't you guys uh, tell me your names and then uh, tell me the name of the organization. So my handle is Dirthog and we're DEFCON Group 306. Hey, I'm Will. I've got the community. I'm Lenny. Yep. Cool. So uh, what is DEFCON Group 306? So DEFCON Group 306 is basically a group of like-minded individuals who enjoy 
the term hacking. So how do you guys get into something like this? Um, the interest probably came back, you know, before high school and in high school, watching lots of tech TV and reading lots of books. Um, books like this one right here, right, right. super good. So uh, we got the P O C G T F O. What does that What does that stand for? Proof of concept or get the F out. It looks like a like a is this like a hacker bible or? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we are doing some vacuum form. So what is what is involved here? Well, so there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with vacuum forming. So basically it is the essence of taking a plastic, heating it up, and then molding it over something else. So currently right now what we're doing is we're doing the Guy Fox mask. So we have a stone cast of the, the mold that we're gonna make, and then it'll eventually turn and look into something like this, right? This it seems to me it would be like a boon for cosplayers. Oh yeah, no, we that's kind of why we got into uh, our hobby business here is we specifically do a lot of stuff for cosplayers, make stuff for cosplayers. And so, you, so you do some custom work for people. If somebody has something in their imagination, but obviously not the know-how or the wherewithal to build their own back kit, um, how do they get in touch with? with your group to do that? Uh, well, you, you can find us on Facebook. We're Hephaestus Forge Props. Uh, we are more than happy to talk you through the process of it. There's tons of forms online and how to build the like the RFP forms and stuff for cos cosplay props and whatnot that way. Are we ready? We're ready. OK, let's mold. Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun, da, da, da. <gasps> That's so Stranger Things. Oh, I know, right? It's kind of creepy when all of a sudden it just takes shape and snaps into place. That's so awesome! I'm here with Chris, and we are outside because we're burning things, because we're bending steel and stuff. We're blacksmithing. Ooh, it's so cool! Okay, what are you gonna make today? Well, I've started um, a clock from my uncle. Um, it's about three feet in diameter. It's forged steel. Um, I also have a chunk of it's called canister Damascus, and so it's a bunch of little bits of ball bearings and chain links and that sort of thing. Put in a canister with some powdered steel, and you forge weld that all together. And uh, those are going to be the numbers, and it creates a beautiful pattern. Um, so I got to forge them out and uh, get that sort of thing rolling. So how did you get into blacksmithing? I actually took a course in Ontario uh, at Halliburton School of the Arts. And uh, from there, just kind of made my own forge and I came back to Saskatchewan and uh, away I went, just kind of doing my own thing. Um, I'm also a machinist, so that sort of thing. Goes hand in hand. Yeah, it does, that, that it does. So if somebody was like interested in getting into it, but like obviously you don't want to just go out and like buy a forge and all this expensive stuff, like what advice would you have for them to just get a taste to see if it's for them? Um, there are a couple courses that you could take. Um, if you want to go big into like a college, you can go to the Halliburton School of the Arts in Ontario. But here in Saskatoon, uh, the Western Development, Mu Western Development Museum offers a course. Um, there's another blacksmith, uh, Craig Campbell, I believe, offers a course. And Makerspace has also started offering a, a course, which I'm teaching. Okay, um, I am going to check out the website because like, I really want to do this. Like, like I need another craft or hobby to start pretty much every table we've gone by today it's like oh yeah I've done that I, I have that but I, but I am obsessed with this and I think it's amazing and I I would love to just see your work so I will be on your roster at some point all right hello lovely ladies and or dudes my name is Hank this is Tony and today on tweet beat we're gonna be talking about some crazy fun video games that you need to be playing right now Video games! Tweet beat. Beat tweet, yes. In Detroit Become Human on PS4, you are in control over the fate of a new race of free-thinking intelligent beings, giving you the chance to make empowering and heartbreaking decisions. It is a visually and emotionally stunning true masterpiece, 95 out of 100. Trivia HQ is a live game show you can play at least twice per day on your iPhone or Android device. It's real people playing for real money, sometimes up to one million dollars! 
Catan Universe on your Apple or Android device is a true representation of the official board game. Play single player versus computer controlled opponents with increasing levels of gameplay intelligence and to add to the replay value, <laughs> there is online multiplayer. 86 out of 100, hashtag frustrating in a good way. So, speaking of video games, those are all the ones you should be playing right now. As you have watched Punch TV for the uh, last several years that we have been on, you know that Tony doesn't really know anything about video games. Uh, but last time we talked about video games, we were at the WDM. Tony was all like, what is Angry Birds? But I am sure since the year has gone by, Tony, have you played <laughs> Angry Birds now? Nope, not once, no. Nope. <laughs> have you played any video games since then, Tony? I have not played one video game in the last year, no, not no. a one. So for everything you should be watching, reading, listening to, playing, follow at Hank and Kelso and at Shaw Punch TV. That's it for me. My name is Hank. That's an eyeball. That's Tony. See you next time on Tweet Beat. I can tell you a lot about toys though. Star Wars toys, I'm your guy. The collector rules! Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com, in person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. So we're going to, uh, well, Tony is going to step into the flight simulator in a moment. Uh, but first I want to know, Tony, uh, what's your call sign? Uh, Do you know what a call sign is? No. Big T. Big T. <laughs> Big T. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Big T. That's your call Big sign. T. So how familiar are how familiar are you with the movie Top Gun? I've seen it once in 1985 or six, whenever it came out. Interesting. So if I shout at you the whole time while you're doing this, will that motivate you? Yes, definitely. Because that'll make it way easier when people shout at me. I'm usually really good. <laughs> okay, we'll try it. <laughs> Are you afraid? Are you afraid here? I'm more afraid of the mic you keep sticking in my face. <laughs> He'll have the first official actual crash in a flight simulator. No, I'm gonna be really good. I think I, I think you'll be surprised. All right, well I'll have I faith gotta, in you then. I gotta go and put on my uniform first. All right. And then, uh, then we're ready to go. Okay, cool. Throttle. Okay. Um, so full forward is full throttle. Back is none. Forward, faster, slower. Okay, got it. That's all I need to know. Punch it, Chewy. Speak in his language. We got Big T ready to launch on Alert Five. I need my, uh, I need my flying hat. <laughs> hey, bring me my flying hat. So when you're ready, I'm going to hit P and. Okay, when you're ready, I'm going to hit P and then you can full throttle and go. Okay. So, now wait till you get to 80 and then you can pull up. You need to push this forward until you get throttle all the way. Okay. And you don't need to touch your throttle until you're landing now. And now, so. when I hit 80, so I'm just, I have to... You have to, yeah, okay. you're full throttle, so... Okay, I'm going. What are you doing, picking up speed here? Oh. Pull up. Pull up. Okay, Ooh, <laughs> level out there, buddy. Oh, well, wow, wow, that's left. awesome. You don't need to worry about your throttle until you're landing. Oh. <laughs> nice. You're in a bit of a nosedive uh, situation there. Whoa, pulled it out of the fire at the last second. I can't, I can't. Oh, what does this do? What do my feet do? <laughs> what do my feet do? Am I doing something with my feet? Yes. Yeah. What am I doing with them? They're your rudders, so if okay. you look at the back of your plane when you do that, yeah. what it do like you moves. Okay, you gotta tell me these things. You gotta this is like, you need to use them. But I was! Man, I'm like sweating. Someone bring me a towel. Big T, I've got the ball. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Oh, you're caught in the jet wash. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm coming in. These are things you need to tell me. These are things. Yeah, okay, these things are important when flying. Yeah, I'm coming down. Okay, I'm coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. I'm coming down. Oh, no, I'm not gonna bounce. I'm not gonna bounce. No! Down nose down. Hey, you did it, big guy. Throwing down the throttle. I am sweating right now. I'm not wet. I need a change of shirt. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
Oh man, I feel it's I'm I oh I feel like I'm being transported to another world. Ah, where where am I? At the Deadlock Escape Virtual Reality Arcade. Where's my hat? with Adrian, like, I just did this plank thing and I, it was easy. Holy crap, Castic, I am not doing this. Oh my God, no way. Oh my God. I can't see, oh I can't see his hand in shot. Yeah. Oh my God. Jump. Hey, turn your head so we can see what. Uh... Oh my God, I'm coming back. That was like the scariest thing I've ever done. That was amazingly <laughs> scary. I'm sweating and my hands are shaking. That was, that was insane. I walked the plank, I actually thought I couldn't do it. Like, and it's just mind over matter, but it was insane. It was crazy. And it's funny, it doesn't matter how many people sit here and watch it and think, oh, that's so easy, you know? Why are you being a baby, you know? Get out there on the plank. Oh, as soon as you put that headset on, you are transformed on that plank and that's it. Your brain says, nope, not gonna move, not gonna jump, <laughs> not taking another step. That was awesome. Okay, so we were talking earlier, you have a, there's a lot of other games you can play here, games for kids, games for adults. Uh, it's all virtual reality. You can also do the, um, the escape rooms, virtual reality as well. Uh, I don't really know a lot about virtual reality, but like, so this whole place is amazing to me. Cool, yeah, we have uh, six virtual reality stations, so you can play six player, multiplayer virtual reality games. And we're also opening up uh, two, we have two live action escape rooms, which is not virtual reality. We have the wizard school room back there, which is kind of like that, you know, Harry Potter thing. We can't say that because of copyrights, but. It's, yeah. it's inspired by <laughs> Harry Potter. Uh, and we do have our dueling escape room. That's going to be the first in Saskatchewan. Uh, two teams will go into two identical rooms, and the first team that escapes uh, wins. So that'll awesome. be awesome. I've done escape rooms at the other store. Now, you have two locations now as well. So what's the other location? On Hanselman Court, we have four rooms over there. Oh, it looks like somebody's just escaped over there. <laughs> Yay! They're coming out, They're coming out early. Um, so yeah, we have uh, four rooms over at the other location. We still have Missing Maryland, our Haunted Asylum, Nightmare, and Hero that cool. they can play as well. Awesome, thank you very much. We all, all of us did the plank and we did some other stuff. Catherine was able to do some flying. And uh, yeah, I was impressive. There were some scary clown things, which I would not suggest. That was awesome. Thank you very much for having us in today. That Thanks was so awesome, yeah. awesome. So another cool thing at Deadlock Escape right now is you can come into the wizarding theme live action escape room and it just so happens after I walk the plank out there, a couple people finish the escape room. So I, did you actually escape or did, did they end yes. it before? We, we made it to escaped. the leaderboard. Yeah, it was good. We rocked. So without any spoilers, could you tell us a little about what you experienced on the inside? Intense it, terror. <laughs> it was really set up really well so for Harry Potter. Awesome we were like squealing in each room. <laughs> <laughs> Any Harry Potter lover would love it. Any magic yeah. lover would love it. Yeah. yeah. So you started with uh, a few of your closest friends. Uh, did they escape as well, or are they still locked away in the wizarding room here? <laughs> We could probably leave them. Yeah, I'm good with leaving them here. <laughs> yeah. And the one thing for me is if I was to do that and say like the punch crew came and we were in this room and like I know a few of the people wouldn't pull their own weight. Like Tony would go cower in a corner and he wouldn't do anything. So with the rest of your team, did everybody kind of put in the effort or was a few people maybe that didn't really pull their own weight? I think we all did pretty good with it. We all did yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Well, that wraps up our third nerd crawl. We left Craig inside, standing, petrified, at the end of a plank, can't move. Eh, ah, he'll figure it out. Oh. Will he figure it out? Will he figure it out? I think he will. Um, Tony, what was your favorite part about today? Uh, I'd have to say definitely when we went to uh, the VR and we walked the plank, it was incredibly scary, but it was awesome. Never felt anything like that before, so. Hank? Besides walking the plank and feeling like I was gonna die, the best part of my life was watching Tony attempt to fly a plane. And the amount of sweat that came off him and the look on the person's face who had to sit down after you, it was like, ugh, it was awesome. 
That is awesome. Um, yeah, I now know never to get into a plane with Tony behind the wheel. That's probably a smart thing. Um, the whole Maker Fair was an absolute delight for me because that is like my jam. I like making stuff and there were so many things where it's like, I've done that, I've done that. I want to do that. So I'm really looking forward to next year's Maker Fair. I think it'll be bigger and better than ever. So, you know, I hope you got some inspiration from this episode and you saw how cool it was and that you want to go next year because it's a really amazing thing what's happening in our community. It sure is, Jody. It sure is. All right. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, next episode is going to be our best of, so be sure to check in for that. And in the meantime, fellas, what do you do? What about keeping my dukes up? Keep your dukes up. Well Some of them are pretty hard clues, so it took four brains to figure, five yeah. brains to figure it out. At least four or five brains to figure it out here at Deadlock Escape Room, wizarding theme something rather, something rather, <laughs> that Dean is going to cut out when we edit it. All right. <laughs>